All right, so now we are going to move to the interaction module. So right now we have four different parts, a column, a plate, an end plate, a bolts, and a beam. And we need to define how these parts are connected to each other. From the first icon over here, we need to create an interaction. And if you click on uh, create an interaction, you can give it a name and you need to specify like the type and then this interaction need to be provided with a property. So before I go into the create interaction, I will close this and first I will define an interaction property. So if you click on the second icon, so we need to create an interaction property. We need to give it a name. So let's say uh, we can keep it as it is like interaction property dash one or maybe we remove the dash one all right so this is an interaction property there are different types of interactions that we can choose from for our case we are talking about structure parts here mechanical parts connected to each other so we are going to select the first one which is contact so if i click on continue this is very similar to the definition of the material so again you have here the contact property options, it's empty. And then you have a bunch of uh, lists that you can select from to start adding different properties. So we don't care about the electrical and the thermal for in this case, we just go ahead to the mechanical. And then we go with the first one, the tangential behavior. So here I need to tell Abacus pretty much for this interaction property, if I have two parts that are uh, in contact with each other and they are being uh, one part is sliding against the other so this is a tangential behavior so if one part is sliding against the other what kind of property should we have in this case so you have from this drop, drop down menu you have the friction formulation so this is pretty much friction you need to define the friction so you can choose frictionless meaning they will just slide against each other there is no friction or you can select other uh, cases. Rough means that no slip will occur once the points are in contact. So once you have two surfaces of two different parts that get in contact with each other and they are sliding against each other in a tangential behavior, they will not move against each other. It will be rough, okay? It's like the friction coefficient is infinity pretty much. So this is rough. This is uh, frictionless if you don't have any friction at all. If you want something in between, you can select penalty. So if you select penalty, then you need to specify pretty much the friction coefficient. All right. In my case, I'm going to use actually a friction coefficient of 0.35 between steel and steel. So I'm going to use that. You can use whatever any friction coefficient that you want. If you want to define something more uh, advanced, you can define things like the slip rate, uh, dependency, uh, if, there is, if this friction coefficient is a function of the contact pressure, then you can modify that. So there are all advanced options. If it's temperature dependent, if this friction coefficient is temperature dependent, then you need to define the different friction coefficients with respect to the different temperatures. You can also define things here with respect to the shear stress limit. So basically there is a friction, but at one point there is nothing. So you can specify these limits. Elastic slip, again, you can provide these values if you want. But in our case, we will stay with the basic. And again, in a future videos, we will discuss the more advanced options. Uh, there is also the static kinetic exponential decay. And this is what you typically use if you have like some kind of dynamic movement and you want to simulate a static a kinetic, uh, if you have a static coefficient of friction and kinetic coefficient of friction. Uh, if you are not familiar with those, you can check like there are other YouTube videos that go through uh, what is the difference between a static friction of coefficient and a kinetic coefficient of friction. But this is again, mostly for dynamic uh, problems. Our case is static, so I, on I only care about the penalty, uh, the static friction of coefficient. So that's it. So now I define the tangential behavior. So right now I told Abacus as part of the property that any two surfaces in a tangential behavior, this is how they are going to interact together. 
but I haven't said yes how they are going to interact in the normal behavior. So this is the second important thing that we need to define. So I'm going to select from mechanical, normal behavior. And here again, we have different options. So for the pressure over closure, so hard contact, hard contact means that any two surfaces that are getting in contact with each other in the normal direction, they will have a hard contact, meaning that they will bear against each other and they will not penetrate each other, which basically what we typically experience in the physical world, right? Any two parts, these are steel parts, so if they are in contact with each other, they are not going to penetrate each other, they are just going to bear against each other. So this is what hard contact means. And this is actually what we want in our case. There are other options as well, exponential, linear, and tabular, where you provide some specific values depending on the uh, value of the pressure. But for our case, hard contact, this is what we typically deal with. A constraint enforcement method, you don't need to use that, just use the default, uh, which should be fine and it will not cause any problems. But if you have some any if you have an advanced model and you have some problems with the normal behavior uh, causing uh, conversions problem, then you can use other uh, solvers uh, to enforce these methods. The last one is very, very important. So this checkbox, it says allow separation after contact. So basically, if you have two surfaces or two parts that they get in contact with each other, OK, so they are not going to penetrate each other. That's fine. But if I pull them away from each other again will they should be should they be allowed to separate or not so this is what this means so in our case yes we want to allow separation after contact because for instance in our model over here the plate can uh, touch uh, or can bear against the column flange and maybe in another uh, loading scenario it can pull back away from the column flange so yes we want to allow separation after contact that's it. So now I define the normal tangential and normal behavior. These are the main two behaviors that I want to model in my interaction. There are other thing, things like damage, damping, fracture, cohesive behavior, and so on. But these are again advanced things that perhaps are more relevant to other cases. So I click OK, and that's it. So now I define the interaction property. So now that I define the interaction property, and I can go ahead to the first icon here and create the interaction itself. So if I click on that, so this is the interaction. Let's give it a name. So I will call it a general interaction. You can call it whatever you want, of course. And this will be applied in the loading step or in the initial step. Well, here I'm going to typically, if you go through the if you select the loading step, the option that you have here is called, you have a multiple options, but the basic one that we use is surface to surface contact. Now, if I select this option and I click continue, Abacus is going to tell me, okay, select now the surfaces. So Abacus is expecting me to select a master surface and then on one part, and then I need to select a slave surface. So this would be the other surface on the other part. So for instance, I will select the master surface like as this one uh, on the column flange. For instance, of course, I need to select all the flange uh, surface. But let's say I select this and I say done. And then I need to select the slave type. Perhaps I select surface as well. And perhaps I select the surface here, the opposite surface of the end plate. But if I'm doing that, this can get very tedious because depending on how big my model is and how many parts do I have, I will need to define this surface to surface contact for all the surfaces that are interacting with each other, which can be, which can take forever, especially that you, if you think about it, you can, you need to define an interaction in this case between the surface, for instance, of the plate, this exterior surface, and the inner surface of the bolt. And you need also to define between the, the bolt head or not and uh, the bolt flange. So it would take forever. So let's not do that. Let me close this one. So instead, I will go again 
in the create interaction. Again, I will call it general interaction. And the smart way is to go to the first step, the initial one. So you select the initial, and then you will get an additional option over here, pop up in your dialog. So this one is called general contact. So general contact, this one uh, means if that the interaction property that we defined earlier will be applied everywhere in your model. So any parts interacting together, any two surfaces of any two different parts interacting together, the interaction property will be applied. So I don't need to go and pick every interacting surfaces individually. So this means that Abacus will just check and during the analysis, any two parts in touch with each other, the property will be applied. So I'm going to use general contact. So this is the smart way of doing things, of course. And everything here I will leave as it is. So this is all with self. So everything is in contact, will apply. Uh, you can add, you can exclude sur specific surfaces if you have some kind of uh, a model where you don't want to apply a specific interaction property to a specific region or a specific surface. So you can exclude those from here. Okay, if you have already defined surfaces earlier. And from here, I need to uh, select the interaction property, which that's why we did this first. So this is the interaction property that we defined earlier, and I will select it like that. That's it, and I'm not going to do anything different. And I click OK. So right now, what we defined, we defined that any two parts connected to each other or will be in touch with each other, the interaction property that we defined will apply. So this is good, but there is a problem. The problem is this beam. So this beam, if I load this beam, as we would like to do later on, this beam is going to move away, like it will bear against the plate for a second, yes, based on the general interaction that we just defined, but it will going to separate because we said the interaction property that we defined, we said that after contact, the part can separate, the surfaces can separate from each other. But this doesn't apply here for the beam end because the beam end is supposed to be tied, it is supposed to be tied to the uh, end plate using welding, right? So this means I need to create a constraint. So I need to create an additional constraint to say that the end of this beam is tied to the uh, end plate, all right? So in order to do that, how we can do that? We do this from this third icon that says create constraint. So if you click on this one, there are different types of constraint that you can define. Tie constraint, rigid body constraint, coupling, uh, multi-point uh, constraint, shell to solid, many, many, many things, all right? So before I do this, uh, because if I create a constraint over here, typically, let's say, uh, let's call this constraint beam to plate. So this is the beam to plate constraint, and I'm going to use the tie constraint. And then I'm going to say continue. So now Abacus is telling me to choose the master surface. So if I click on surface, so the master surface in my case, I'm going to select pretty much what would what constitutes master and what constitutes slave. Master would be typically the, the surface that doesn't move as much, the more rigid uh, surface. So in this case, I would choose the surface of the end plate. So I need to select pretty much, oh, I need to click on my shift button and then select all the surface of the end plate. So by the way, you can do this here or earlier, you could have created a set. Okay, instead of uh, choosing everything here from uh, your uh, viewport. So right now we are selecting everything in our viewport. But if I have created a set earlier on, okay, uh, I could have accessed over here from this button surfaces and I could have just selected the surface right away. 
uh, how to create a set by the way uh, so this is if you go to parts uh, so this is under end plate because we want to create a set in the under end plate and you could have created the surface in the beginning all right so either way would work actually right now since i'm selecting this surface anyway okay you could click this button over here and say create a surface and then automatically abacus will create a surface based on this your selection okay so this is one way to do it to select right ahead from the viewport okay so if i do that i can click done that's fine and then for the slave type again i'm going to use a surface and in this case i'm going to select the edge of the beam end all right so i'm selecting here you see the color a little bit of magenta color so now i can uh, selected the edge of the beam end and then I click done and then I already picked the master surface I clicked the slave surface I don't need to modify anything else everything should remain the same I will just say okay so basically all the degrees of freedom between this surface and this surface will be tied together okay so translational and rotational degrees of freedom so I say, okay, that's it. So you get this uh, uh, pretty much uh, what you see here, this like uh, uh, annotation or like uh, visualization that Abacus generates to uh, simplify that you, so, so sorry to represent that you have here a tie constraint. So the, the best way to do it, again, uh, you shouldn't like, you shouldn't select things from the viewport. You should create these cells beforehand all right and then uh, define select the cells automatic uh, the surfaces or sorry automatically from the predefined surfaces so in the next so this is something that we can do actually we can go through this right now so if i go to part let's just see how can we do that if i go for instance to the end plate so under end plate surfaces so you can click on double click on surfaces and then you can give it a name so i can call it uh, surface surf uh, plate face or welded face and click continue and then i can select all these and actually i don't need to select the edge one i just need to select the interior ones that are in contact with the beam okay and i can click done that's it so i define the surface over here so if I click on it, it's highlighted in the viewport. In the same time, I can go to the beam. So this is my beam. And then I can, uh, under beam, let's create a set, uh, a surface as well. And let's call it the surf beam welded end. Continue. And then let's select the regions, the edge of the beam. So this is the appropriate way of doing things in order not to make mistakes uh, from in the viewport when you are selecting things in the viewport where you have like multiple parts. And I click done. And then if I go back actually to the interaction, uh, if I go to the constraint manager, if I edit, I can edit this selection and then I can modify here the region for the master surface for the master surface i click surface and instead of selecting things from the viewport i can go to surface and then i have the surfaces that i i defined so i click here the end plate surface and i can highlight it here so you see here it is and then i click ok and then let's do the same for the slave one so a surface i'm not going to select from the viewport i'm going to select the one that i already defined continue ok dismiss so that's it it's the same procedure of course but it's better always to create surfaces and sets to make it easier to define things all right so this uh, concludes our interaction so now we define the interaction so everything is connected together so in the next uh, video we are going to uh, define the loads so we are going to define the loads